Thanks. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode nine of the Young Broke Musicians podcast. Oh, yeah. Hey. Ne- nearly at episode 10. I'll tell you what, I always feel like a DJ having this thing in front of do me. Do you? I really like I, it. I like it when you get to do this, so you just let's just bring the music down. There we go. The little fades are cool, aren't they? I like it. I really like them a lot. Boom. So. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. It's not been a great week for me. True. It's been, I don't think it's been a great week for both of us, if I'm completely honest. It's been a weird week. It has been a very weird week. It has. I think we should start off being very real with you guys. Very real. Very real. It's about to get deep. It is. Um, One minute into the podcast, we're already, <laughs> or, or, or already sad stuff, but it is, it, we've got fun stuff to talk about. We have. So I thought that we'd probably talk about this and then we can talk about some more upbeat things. But I think this is a really important topic. Definitely. So basically, I'm going to be completely real, completely raw. Two days ago, I was in bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. I felt useless. I felt um, I felt redundant. I felt all of the negative things about myself that I could possibly... I felt absolutely ridiculous about myself. Mm. Um, and I think it's mainly because as musicians, I mean, being a full-time musician... Very true. I haven't gigged and had like a, an actual gig in months now. If it's been about three or four months, hasn't it? It's been a bit insane, really. And it sucks. And I think as musicians, we are very used to getting... Um, that kind of buzz when mm. we're about to do a gig or when we do a gig and I haven't had that buzz. I've done lives on Facebook and that kind of stuff. It's not the same. Though, it's not it? the same because you like, although I've had like social distanced people like my neighbors in the garden and everything, it's still, it's, it's still not the same. It's not, it's not the same as like, cause this, it's just sort of, it was like, it's just going downstairs or going to the other room rather than, you know, packing your gear going getting in the car and actually going to work if you know what I mean it's just it's very hard and I mean for me as well I I, I've just felt really like really uh really down in myself Mm. I've been really harsh to myself and I think if I'm honest having like a best buddy like you who knows what I'm going through definitely and if I'm completely honest the whole pandemic hasn't really affected me as much as it has affected other people mentally no um I think because um because I I actually like being home and I like my environment at home it's my little safe haven and I love my I adore my parents so much and you got your little pippa to keep I've got my little pippa as well my little dog and I've not mind I I really I haven't mind being there Mm. um but I think two days ago it kind of really hit me when they were like yeah weddings are allowed to kind of take place now but no music yeah that's the thing I I'm struggling with because I put a video out on my my channel the other day just talking about and how it sort of affected me sort of mentally wise and Mm. I'm being like autistic I don't cope well with change at all I I hate sort of last minute changes it sucks it just sort of throws me out of my system and I never really know how to cope with that and the fact that I, I, it was probably my own fault. I was thinking, like, when they said, oh, yeah, pubs and stuff can be reopened, I was like, oh, great, normal life, back to yeah. back to gigging. They were like, nah, no, no, mate. No live music. No live music. No, nothing that can sort of increase people's talking voices. So it said, like, if you are going to have live music, um, no, if you are going to have music, it has to be, like, pre-recorded, like, back, like, and stuff, and no, at a low volume, which sucks. And the fact that you're only allowed, like, th- what was it, 30 people at a wedding? Was it or something like I that? I think it. I, th- I think so. Yeah, but they're only allowed at the reception. They're only allowed two families mm. or from two different households. That sucks. And it's just like, well, how are you going to choose whose whose family and I household know. you're going to choose? It's like if we, it's like if when you and Vic get married, you're going to have to choose between your parents or, <laughs> or your mum or her mum and it's just like what <laughs> no that, that's the really annoying thing Vic's been like really really wanting to like go dress shopping and stuff Aww. but they're only allowed to take one person with them so she, she said that she'd found like a little dress that she really loves she and I has. was like oh 
just so excited for her. I haven't seen it yet. She it's was... pink. It's got flowers and sparklers and feathers. <laughs> Hawaiian star things, like the flower things. No. I have been. I played at a Hawaiian wedding before. Aww. It was really fun because the groom, it was very, very last minute. Um, basically they were going to get married but there was a delay with the paperwork so they couldn't officially get married right. I don't know why but someone had messed up none of the, like the groom or family basically the people who sort that stuff out they'd messed up registrars that's it and right. there was a delay with the paperwork so they had everything planned like the wedding and stuff but they couldn't legally get married it had to be sort of like a, a love ceremony oh my god you know what I mean? so they were all feeling a bit down so they said oh well we, we were still going on a honeymoon to Hawaii so let's all just wear Hawaiian shirts to our wedding so everyone oh. I was all wearing Hawaiian shorts, uh, shirts and shorts, and uh, like we all got like little flower wreath things. That's around. lovely. But that was packed, Aww. and that's th- that's the fun thing about wedding. It's two families coming together, and if that can't be allowed, then it sort of it kind of defeats the purpose. Well, does, it doesn't because does like at doesn't. least at least like you two are getting to tie the knot, and it's all great and everything. But, but it's not the same when no, your you, families are there, yeah. the people you love most in the world. Yeah. You have to choose between. I mean, my friend's getting married next year. She's mm. meant to be this year, but she's getting married next year now. I mean, they've got like over 150 people going. How yeah. do you narrow 150 people down to 30? That's hard. Like, and I'm a little bit harsh. It as is well. harsh. Because <laughs> you're going to have to go through the mindset of like, oh, yeah, we really, really like them. We really want them there. But then you're like, Oh, but do we really see them enough? Do we do we want those people? To, it sucks. I mean, at the same time, I completely understand. More people at a wedding means more chance of like stuff being spread. Stuff being spread. I get it. But it's what I don't sad. get is, as a bride, is this is my favourite part of a wedding. Mm. When a bride is walking down the aisle, and the musician, me, I would be <laughs> literally in the corner at the back, and I would start to play as she walks down the mm. aisle. Nobody's talking at this point. No. Nobody's talking. Nobody's going to raise their voice because a bride is entering down the aisle. Yeah. Like, it's an intimate moment. But when it's the aisle's empty, like, when they look and see all their friends and family smiling at them. And it's if I'm completely honest, that wouldn't, like, if I was to get married, that wouldn't really bother me. Like, mm. at least, uh, uh, like, at least if my, my immediate family there and my best yeah. friends are there, I wouldn't really mind that. But... Mm. I don't understand why music is not allowed in that moment. I know. Like it's an intimate moment. Yeah. I'm, I'm not right next to someone. I'm not no. going to be singing and projecting anything onto anybody else. Exactly. Like I've got a microphone. I've got a speaker. Like I'm very like safe yeah. and everyone else, as long as they protect themselves, exactly. they're very safe from me and I'm safe from them. Exactly. You're going to be close to the microphone. So if anything does not to be too graphic but if there is the chance of spit it's just going to go into the microphone and you're far away from everybody yeah I mean, and it's your own microphone so there's exactly. no chance of anyone else using it no nope. and that sucks so i think for me i just got really down because i was like well that just means there are literally it's going to be months before we're allowed to work mm. and i love my job Same. i absolutely love it and it gives me purpose and if i'm completely honest at school I was rubbish at everything except mm-hmm. like singing. I didn't take music for GCSE, but oh, I did mean, I. <laughs> I took cooking over the music. <laughs> I took resistant materials. No, nice. I got an A. Hey. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dad, for helping me with my project. <laughs> what a legend! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for me, like. I was really bad at everything. And when I left school, I was like, well, it doesn't really matter anyway because I'm going to be a singer. Like, I want to be a performer. Mm. Um, I'm creative. So, like, getting whatever I got on maths and English and science and stuff doesn't really matter. matter. But now I'm like, oh, God, like, what what am I going to do? The thing thing you are really good at and it's frustrating that we can't actually do it. Really good at or only good at? I think that's no, my really, case. No, really, really good at. Really <laughs> it's, it's the only thing I'm good at. Not at all. You take banging photos. You make amazing videos. Thanks, Incredible dude. voice. So not the only thing you're good at. Thank you. I mean, so, yeah. It's, it's just, just frustrating, isn't it? Is it is really fr- I was literally about to say the same thing. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's really hard because people are like, oh, no, but like, don't worry about it. Like, you can still do your lives and stuff. And it's like, yeah. It's but not I'm not getting thing, paid for that. Mm. Like I'm st- like I've got bills that are coming up. Yeah. I've got like insurances, and it's it's scary. It's it really blooming scary. It is. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one in the world that's feeling like this. I know that you. I I struggled watching your <laughs> watching your video. <laughs> I had a it lot of people say real. that. Yeah, I was like really honest. I was I was, I was saying 
like the last sort of few weeks, my mental health has just been down the pan. Yeah. Like it's, it, I was really, really raw in that video. And I usually script my videos. My videos are usually sort of lighthearted, fun, you know. Yeah, they are. Like the vlog I made the other day, that was, you know, that was me in a, a pretty good place. Yeah. You know, I was excited about doing a podcast and people would ask like how we do it. So I thought, yeah, I'll make a video. Like, that was fun. But then when I just hit, sort of hit a low, I just sort of felt like, yeah, I need to just get this off my chest. Yeah. I th it's important that you do that as oh, well. Definitely. It's a place for venting. Otherwise, it's just going to eat you alive. Yeah, of course it is, and it's 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 bloody hard. Mm. And like we said in the past few episodes, like we're very sensitive souls. We are sensitive souls. So so it's quite hard for us mm. to to go through this and be like, well, what are we supposed to do now? I just felt completely redundant, mm. um, and it was I just felt completely disposable. Yeah, the, the fact that there's never any job security, and not always the guarantee of pay at all gigs because you know sometimes it can like it's happened before we get double booked or it, it gets cancelled last minute and the fact that that's still so up in the air yeah. even more than ever now that's sort of i think what brings a bit of anxiety to me you and a lot of people who are in our position yeah and and i just want everyone to know that it's okay to to not feel okay and it's okay to not feel like you've got this because yeah. two days ago I was in bed not wanting to get out of bed crying my eyes out and being like nope I ain't got this I have not got this whatsoever um but there are little things that you can do like when you wake up in the morning routine for me is a huge thing and absolutely you love a good routine I do love a good routine and a spreadsheet I love <laughs> spreadsheets and lists like no, love it so for me i think getting up i watched a video where it's the five second rule and basically you wake up in the morning your alarm goes off and you go one two three four five and you get up it's just like listening to a calm meditation right <laughs> it's okay <laughs> <laughs> we could record them on this <laughs> we should but yeah for me like uh, and the thing that really stuck in my mind that hopefully it can stick in your guys minds is if you don't do something within those five seconds mm. your brain kills the idea interesting so if you get the idea to get up get up right there and then because in five seconds your brain's gonna be like nah because that's the thing i remember watching a video about casey neistat's every sort his standard day of what he does and he wakes up at five o'clock in the morning every day because he's convinced and there's, there is some sort of science behind it, but I, I say sort of science, there is science behind it, but they say that... <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> but he says the most productive time is the first two hours whilst you're awake or something. So he gets up at 5 a.m., gets the most work he needs to do done because then he's got that extra sort of hour in the day because he's woken up earlier. I'd rather sleep. You would rather sleep. <laughs> I, I tried that like on days when I go to London to film I'm up at five o'clock in the morning and even before I get the train I still managed to like finish a video or something it's I can see I can understand the logic of it like if you've got something to do in the morning that's sort of what motivates me so making a list making of a list all the things so I, I made a list you so did. I literally on my phone when I woke up I said right the second that I wake up I'm gonna put on a song that makes me feel really good which was Sovereign Light Cafe by Kane sure we'll come back um, to that one later as we well. will come back to that um and i literally wrote myself a little note in notes on my phone and i was like i'll read it actually it's a good because note. this this is um have you read that one to me nope oh you wrote I've me two lists here, ready i've put here today is going to be the start of your one two three four five don't let your brain kill your ideas and goals you are the only one in your way. Be a warrior because you are a badass. And then I put, um, and you got this. I'm proud of you. So oh. I then like wrote all of the things That's that really I need nice. to do. So literally I, I said, um, count down from five. Oh, count to five and then get up. I did that. Like drink a pint of water. I did that. I had some breakfast. And the most important thing Say five things that you like about yourself. That's good. Because you've got to love yourself. You've got to be kind to yourself. And when people say, be kind to yourself, like... It's easier said than done. There's a difference between being kind to yourself, which I found a little bit difficult, and being a friend to mm. yourself. 
Yeah. I like know what you mean. Being a friend to yourself, you'll be like, okay, today you're feeling a little bit delicate. Okay, that's cool. Let's have a shower. Let's make you feel cool and pretty and clean and fresh. Let's no get stank. some nice no stank. No stank. No stank. <laughs> and then literally get you like in a nice outfit where you feel nice. Or if you're if you're like wanting to feel chilled, get in your PJs, your nice little warm, toasty, clean PJs. See, when I and when look I after get yourself. Yeah. I know what you mean. I, I think getting dressed is an important thing as well. Like when I, I work from home most of the time. So if I get up and I'm still in like my jogging bottoms, I feel really shit about myself. I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like good when I've like got my clothes on. See, I, I, I'm the opposite. I love my joggers. Yeah. I love my PJs. I do love my joggers. but I, I think more I'm more productive. Afternoon. I'm more productive when I'm in my PJs. Nice. <laughs> like it. I've got like these like fur ones and they're just, they're not real fur, but it's just like a whole like, it just look, feels like a giant cuddle. It's brilliant. Mm. So I like them. And you've got your big blanket as well. I've got my big blanket. I love my blanket. Mm. So I literally sit at my desk with my blanket over me like a, th- like a, th- like a Bro. Game of Thrones character. <laughs> like <Crow. a> cape. <laughs> 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 so I think there are many steps that you can take to to help yourself get out of this little rut that I think we're all in. Definitely. Um I'm quite lucky that I live with my parents so like um like mortgages isn't like a huge thing for me but mm. um I I I mean I I feel so like I feel so bad for the people who are out there who do who are full-time musicians and who literally like have got a mortgage and stuff that's that's the struggle that's very scary Mm. very scary i mean you're lucky because you've got your photography work as well yeah and your videography work with simon Mm. i mean you're very lucky very fortunate but i mean lucky as in you're fortunate for that however you're not lucky that you got it because you're bloody talented i still feel lucky bloody good at what you do so still feel lucky about it though because i got sort of got that opportunity at the right time yeah because the day i quit my full-time job was the day before they announced that all schools and stuff would be closing. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's why I consider it lucky. Yeah. Well, go you. I know, right? I think so. Let's talk about other stuff. So we'll go move on, on from that. But if anybody does have any issues or any problems, please feel free to talk to us yeah. because I'm sure that on the gram and our Facebook yeah, page. Because um, we need to, we need to stick to our little musicians network, and, exactly. and we need fan. to make sure that we're all. We're all secure and, and okay with ourselves. Definitely. Be nicer to yourself, guys. Exactly. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat Make sure you have a nice shower. Showers fix everything. Showers are great. I love a good shower. Yes, they are. Right. Yeah. I went onto the internet. Oh, no. Risky. I know. And I did some Googling. Okay. What so did what did the Google... Was Google open at the time? Google was open. Okay. They were open for business. They let me on, unlike right. your Wi-Fi. Yep, my Wi-Fi your just Wi-Fi sucks. It's damn bad. <laughs> anyway, I went on to Google and I did... Mu- I typed in a bunch of things like, do musicians, do singers, will music and when... Or sort of do, do musicians, will music, festivals and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I sort of typed in a couple of words and it came up with like, well, basically most Googled things. You know when like celebrities type in their yeah. name like does, I don't know, Harry Styles and then blah, 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 blah. And it so fills in the things. I actually did this to myself. Does Roxy Searle or will Roxy no, Searle? No, it says I put Roxy Searle mm. and it says <laughs> oh God. the top, th- I think the top three were, no, four. I remember one was what does Roxy Searle, one have a boyfriend. Fair. Two, Roxy Searle, where does she live? Which was a little bit creepy. That is a bit worrying. The other one was um, Roxy Cell um, mum. Roxy Cell's mum. That's understandable. She's a hero. My mum is a hero. Um, I can't remember the other one now. Um, Roxy Cell something else. It was a bit creepy. Oh, phone number. Dodge. I mean, I, mean, I can understand if someone's trying to book you, but if they're generally just looking for your number to be like, hey, I'll swipe right. It's quite funny. Then that would be weird. I mean, it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. I think it was my brother that showed me them. Wow. Yeah, it was quite funny. Scary. Yeah, we'll have to do yours and then we'll have to let everyone know what, what yours are. <laughs> it's probably, I've uh, is Connor Wells' hair real? <laughs> Someone asked me about that. I posted on my Instagram. Like, yeah, they're extensions, just, everybody, they're extensions. They're, they're fake. It's a weave, <laughs> mate, it's a weave. <laughs> <laughs> that, can you imagine? No, I did an, an assumptions thing on my Instagram, so I'm going to do like, people tell tell me their assumptions about me and I I answer them. So that would be amazing. Yeah, it would. We should do that. Um, yeah, we should. 
And someone, I haven't replied to it yet, I haven't made the video, but someone said, it, your hair is not naturally curly. I was offended <laughs> so badly. <laughs> like... <laughs> Hold my weave. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, hold my beer. <laughs> like, i got to finish this. No. How dare they? Oh, How dare they? You. I kid. I kid. But oh. we we Googled some questions. Yes. So these are the ones that we thought are quite interesting. Yes. And we've got them on a little sheet, which We've I got a lot of the questions. We've got a lot of So questions. we'll try and shoot fr- shoot fr- ask them? Sh- sh- quick fire them. So we'll try and quick fire them um, and get through as many as we can in the time limit that we have. Go on then. Um, okay. Do singers have stronger lungs? It depends what singer. I don't think stronger lungs. They just have more control over them. Okay. That's my take. Okay. Um, I think when I was swimming, I remember saying this, when I was I swimming, remember. I genuinely believed that my lungs got stronger because I was doing a lot of breathing exercises and breath control. And your diaphragm is good as well. And my diaphragm is rock hard. Like Abs like slabs. Ab- <laughs> Abs like slabs with a little bit of flabs. <laughs> like that. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, like for me, I think, I don't know if they're stronger lungs, but I think that, like you said, I think it's more control. Definitely. Yeah. Next question. Do singers use autotune live? Yes. 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 The sad answer is, and that winds me up. Like, However, if you, unless sh- there's one person that can get away with it, Cher. Cher. Yeah, Cher. She is just, she's just a legend. She is. She can get away with anything she wants. Do musicians get money from YouTube? Yes and no. It depends. Um, I you mean, you're, to... you're the YouTube expert, so I'm going to leave this one to you. It depends. Yeah, <laughs> so until about, uh, so three years ago, all you needed was 10,000 lifetime views, not just on one video. That's all your videos combined mm-hmm. on your channel. All you needed was that to be in the YouTube partner program, which enables you to earn AdSense on YouTube. That was until a certain person did a certain thing in a certain forest. What a douche. What a douche. Although I kind of like him now. I've kind of, a lot of people have. I kind of like Logan Paul now. After, after I don't watching, know. After <sighs> watching his Black Lives Matter speech and the fact that he's really changed his content and he's doing good things and that he's cool with KSI now, I kind of have a little bit of respect for him and one of the videos that he made when he trolled the flat earth community he just won my respect there he he basically went went to a flat earth convention and just like was like oh yeah i'm coming out i'm a flat earther and was like completely trolling them i'm not sure how i feel about it i, I don't, really don't know i don't forgive I just, him for it no i don't not at all. i think it's horrendous but i think he's trying to redeem himself unlike his brother which sucks. let's move on let's move on but after he did that YouTube changed their thing and you need 4,000 hours watch time and a 1,000 subscribers. So that is very hard to get. It took me about a year and that felt like the longest year on YouTube. So yes and no. You can make money on putting your own songs on there, but if you're doing covers, it's more than likely to get claimed unless you really drastically change the style of the way you do it. Yeah. So sort of yes and no. Okay, um, let's move on to the next one. Um, do singers really sing in concert? Um, I I would have thought that that question means do they sing live? Yeah. Um, or do they mime? Um, See, if it was Top of the Pops, you'd never sing live on it, do you? No, and neither did Steps. Didn't they? No. They did like the whole Millie Vanilli sort of thing. It was ridiculous. Mm. Um, however, I mean, there's or many concerts. Really? Yeah, they they uh, when I opened for them, they were they were playing to a backing track. I caught their sound check and it was the same as their actual performance. They were playing a festival like a couple of hours earlier, so they didn't sing. They mimed. Oh, see, I know Josh from Union J. Yeah. I'm really surprised because Josh actually can sing. He can sing. He I've really seen him can. in a musical with Zoe. He was in a, a musical called, oh, it wasn't fame. It was myth it was called myth it was ba- he was basically playing this really successful musician who'd like fallen off the wagon and, and, and got addicted to drugs and everyone was trying to help him he wasn't having any of it and then more of the story got better and oh. he sounded amazing in it see i was in chitty chitty bang bang with josh mm. so that's how i know josh no and then worries. his mum became really good friends with my mum. your mum's a good friend to everyone my mum is an amazing person she is <laughs> <laughs> so her. uh some people do sing live other people don't mm. so i mean pink 
Pink, Pink is sing. one who sings live. Pink always sings she live. She can sing. She ain't no B-Tech. No, she's Mm-mm. amazing. She is. When, uh, no, do singers mime in music videos? Yes. yes. Because you're basically singing along to the track you've already recorded. Yeah, and if, if you were if you were to actually sing it whilst you're doing the music video, the, I, the, the kind of like... They might sing whilst it, filming it, but they don't use the audio from it. No. no. Unless it's like a live lounge. Mm. I mean, if you're doing like a live, like Radio 1 and that kind of live yeah. lounge stuff, they'll be singing live. But an actual music video, they won't use the audio from it. Yeah, like uh, Ava Max, Kings and Queens, like... Tune. Where she does this kind of thing and she like flicks her hair and does all of this kind of weird dancing and stuff. Like, mm. I like, no, she wouldn't be singing live there. No, nah, so that. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, it's just like, <laughs> otherwise, it'll sound like that. Sounds like me during an asthma attack. <laughs> or me during a panic attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> right, next one. <laughs> oh, here we go. Welcome to the jungle. This, this. So this was interesting. You told me about this earlier and I literally wanted to put this in. Yeah, we got onto the topic of music videos and I, I told you the story of one of my favourite bands. I, I love this band. They're called Guns N' Roses. I've seen them live Woo! in 2010. Woo! Woo! You're in the jungle, baby. And they their music video, Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome to the Jungle. Such a tune, isn't it? <laughs> but they were begging MTV to play it. MTV re- refused to play it, lo- just like how they refuse to play music now. They refused to play it, and it they just weren't getting anywhere. So they begged and begged. Eventually, they got through, and MTV said, yep, yeah, yeah, we'll play it at like a really quiet time, four o'clock in the morning. No <laughs> one heard it, to which they think no one heard it. It ended up actually breaking their... Uh, what's it? What did I say? Call in desk. Call in desk. Yeah, people were like phoning in to requesting that song more, and they basically blew the desk because of the amount of people that were requesting "Welcome to the Jungle." Amazing. And eventually, that album went to number one, and they actually put it on a decent time schedule. Back when MTV actually used to play decent music. Yeah, that, that I thought that was a pretty cool story. Yeah, I like that. Go go it's Guns and Roses. Good story. Except when they turn up an hour and a half late on stage. Boo. Uh, boo. We don't have a boo on here, do no, we? No, we don't, because we're positive. We on are this. positive. We're positive. We are. <laughs> we're nice. We'll do, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a few more questions, and then we'll, we'll reset our cameras and stuff. What, what one should we do next? Um, let's do, um, do musicians make less money now? Well, considering yeah. as we can't work. We can't work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that sort of fits into the next one. Do musicians get paid from Spotify? Yes. yes. But very... Pence. Pence. So if there was a weird camera jump there, we were just resetting the cameras. <laughs> we're not going to do a break today. We're just plowing through. So <laughs> you, what you were saying, you were saying something about Spotify. I remember a guy was saying on Spotify um, that he needed however many, I can't remember how many streams it was now, mm. um, for him to even buy nappies for his child. That sucks. Um, it was it was quite bad. Mm. I made a video on my YouTube channel about this. I basically... Hair. Hair. It was, honestly, these fake curls, man. <laughs> this is a dodgy <laughs> weave. I'm getting my money back. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I'm just malting. Um, I made a video... Malting? On my, malting. What dogs do, don't they? Malting? Malting. What is it? Dogs. Like malting. Malting, that's it. Malting. Yeah. Malting. Not malting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my hair. <laughs> but I made a video. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, God. Carry on. <laughs> I forgot. Um, you made a video? Oh, yeah. I made a video on my YouTube channel basically comparing... Apple Music to Spotify from a musician's perspective, not as a a listener, as like, are you getting your value for money? Okay. I made it from like, which pays better. So I compared one of my songs on each platform. They'd both been streamed a thousand times. Right. And I basically compared the the month the pay I got for each of those songs on each of those platforms a thousand times. Let's say, uh, 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 do I say it? yeah? Screw it. I'm not afraid. So. Apple Music paid me roughly ten pounds for okay. having my song streamed a thousand times. Okay. Spotify was about one pound fifty. 
Mm. Oh my god. Mm. It's really bad. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. And if you work out like break it down like what break you get per break it down. <laughs> if you work it out how much you get paid per stream it's sort of it was something like 0.009 9p or something. It's really really bad. Oh my god. That's sh- that's shocked me. Mm. Okay, it's so it's annoying because I really love Spotify just because they they're very convenient. They're so convenient. They make you like all these playlists of songs that you might like if you yep. listen to something. There's a playlist called Your Release Radar. So every artist you follow and they release a new song, it goes into that playlist so you never miss yep. it. It's brilliant. And they've got incredible, incredible lo fi playlists. Yes, they do. Color grade and chill. Well, I believe you can also listen to an amazing podcast called Young Broke Musicians. You can listen to Young Broke Musicians on there. <laughs> I mean, not that we'll get anything from it, but no, you can listen to it. It's very true. It's very true. <laughs> um, I think the next one, which literally this is Do Musicians. <laughs> I absolutely loved this question. Mm. So when I was in the West End, we had a conductor. And in the middle of like the theatre, you would have three TV monitors mm. where you can see the conductor. Were they in the pits? They were in pit. Yeah. They were in the pits. Yeah, the conductor was in the pits. Um, but the TV monitors were actually in the theatre. Oh, okay. Cause so you could actually see them. I remember seeing that at the West End where I, I was watching them. I could see the musicians in the pit and then at the back of the things where the, the higher bits are, there were monitors. black and white TVs. Yeah. Yep. So you can see when the conductor's doing this. Mm. Now, (laughs) the the question here was, uh, do musicians watch the conductor? Now, when it comes to West End, the answer is yes, Mm. very much so. Um, Especially when it's West End, um, because you don't have like a drummer that's constantly keeping you in beat. Not that kind of vibe, is it? It's not that kind of vibe. So... um, Yes, the answer is yes for West End stuff. Uh, mm. Musicians, um, when it comes to an orchestra, a hundred percent. Like they are crucial when it comes to that. However, I never understood it. Not all I, I all I understood was the drop was like you're coming in now, and it's just like mm. there are so many sort of hand movements. But to be honest, they all look the same to me. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's just the keeping the timing. Music. Yeah, it's just keeping the timing. Mm. That's it. I mean, it's not about reading music. Like you don't have to read music to be a I know, conductor. But I, like for following the hand things, there's different like what's it, formations and, and movements and stuff, and yeah. they all mean a certain thing. And I'm, I'm do they though? I don't think yeah. they do. Yeah, there's certain positions, like not positions, but ways they do their movements, and they all mean a certain thing. Oh, okay. I remember having a, a, a like sign language. Yeah, a bit like sign language. I need to practice my sign language. I used to be really good at it when I used to work. Did at the you? Nursery. I would love to learn sign language. Please. Please. Thank you. That's the same thing. No, so please, is, lo- is just there. So hang on, for those you. of you who can't see, um, literally oh no, putting your, so, put in your so tips of your fingers. There's a little thing. So please to the knee. So please goes down. So so explain it so that people on Spotify can okay, hear it. So if you're saying please in in um, sign British Sign Language or Makaton, which is sort of like the children-friendly way of saying it. Um, so please you move your hand sort of lower all the way down so please to the knees so literally can't, they can't I, see I'm so, bad at so you're so putting your you fingers on your chin put your hands on fingers on your chin and then you just move them down like oliver asking for more yeah and then so that's please to the knees and then the funny thing is is tar to the bra so it, it doesn't go as low that was like the little sign language sort of okay. things we had and there, there's so many ways to remember it so brothers you rub your knuckles together so brother Right. And then sister. And the fake way to you point in your nose. You, you tap your nose. Because the way <laughs> I remembered it was brothers fight and sisters are nosy. That's, I mean, that's a the way. Bit sexist. It is a little bit sexist. <laughs> but that's the way this. I'm not sign nosy, language I'm inquisitive. <laughs> inquisitive. Um, what was it? So, um, my. Which is putting your hand to your chest. Hand to chest. Yeah. And I think it was my name. So, your top, yeah, top lip. And then you sort of do the same movement as. Um, as if you're cupping your moustache cupping your moustache and then you do your the sign for your name so Connor okay so my name is Connor my name is Roxy there we go Let, let's move on <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got on sign language <laughs> uh, do musicians pay taxes yes. they should well if I they're do. self-employed <laughs> you do I do <laughs> they should be they should be paying taxes um, if you're self-employed or whatever you do um, you should always pay your taxes do it by the books do it by the books always and then you're not going to get in trouble mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. you go done um, do musicians get royalties 
They um, should do. Now, I've, I've made a, li- a little side note of this because PRS mm. is a company that you guys, if you're a musician, um, you need to be a part of PRS. You don't need to, but I would... It's I handy. Would, yeah, I would advise you to be part of the PRS um, and part of the Musicians' Union. Musicians' Union um, is incredible because it also covers you for public liability insurance up to £10 million. And that's a lot. And some venues only allow um, you to be there if, if you, you are... That. Um, covered by 10 million mm-hmm. pounds yeah um so uh, musicians union is amazing if you're a student you can get it for like um uh, 20 pounds 20 pounds a year. um if you're not then i think it's around about two three hundred pounds um if but it's not. worth it it is definitely worth it you also get um two, legal advice and yeah stuff as like well. two consult two consultant time slots yeah. to talk about legal yeah and they things. help you with copyright and distribution and mm. any sort of technical problems you have they do a lot of talks as well don't Mm. they a lot of seminars they do which is really really good um so when it comes to um like getting uh, royalties prs if you write your own songs um and you're singing them at events and stuff um you can just write in to prs and tell them your set list that you did if you register your songs with them then you should get royalties for playing your songs absolutely or if anybody else plays your songs Mm. Um, there you go. So there's a little bit of knowledge there for oh, you. Knowledge. Uh, <laughs> knowledge. Knowledge. Um, will coronavirus? This was my question. That was your actually, question. And I'd really actually. like to know love about that. this. Actually, <laughs> um, I'd really love to know this. So if you guys think uh, have any thoughts about this, then please let me know. But I want to know if coronavirus will reshape how we do music videos now. Mm. It's tricky, isn't it? Ooh. It's changed the music industry. Dramatically. It, dramatically. It's going to change for a good few years. So people aren't going to be able to like get really, really close during music videos. And mm. like, is that going to be a thing? Or crowd surfing's <laughs> done. Like, <laughs> how, like, without a doubt. I mean, you can do it, done. but <laughs> it'll be an risk. epic fail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no one to catch you. We should do a video reacting to musician fails. That would be brilliant. Because well, I was telling you the other day about how James Blunt likes to crowd surf. Oh, I love that. But not anymore. I just love Blunty. Blunty. What a ledge. Dirty little blunt. Dirty little blunt. What a ledge. I um, think it's definitely going to change music videos. Like, yeah. Because you can't have that certain amount of people in a certain place. And if you're a band with, like, say, like five or six members, I and mean, then you've got, like, a whole camera crew of, like, four or five people, say, if you're in a space like this filming a music video, it's going to be risky. Yeah, it's going to be very risky. Mm. Um. Okay. Um, this so was a deep one. Oh, no, go for it. No, go on. Will music ever run out? See, I think not purely because music is constantly changing and developing new music's coming out all the time. I mean, if you if you think back, it was like Beethoven and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and that's changed dramatically Definitely. since, obviously, we've got so many more different styles, different genres um i think it's just gonna keep him like keep evolving yeah keep evolving yeah so i don't think so it's a deep question though when you think about it It will music ever run out will we run out of music i mean if i'm completely honest if we did i'm all i'm all all right with all the old stuff like we we should just new music in ages we should just sort of keep going with, with like do like a whole thing and go back to the Beatles and go back to Queen and just keep listening to Fleetwood Mac guys just, oh, just keep doing it I love Fleetwood Mac they were amazing live right jealous yes you should be so we got more do oh we got um, oh that's the same page I forgot I printed the same page twice I'm looking at it like it's two <laughs> different pages um, let's have a look do musicians need social media I think yes I think now more than ever yeah 100% um i think it's a massive thing to to make sure that you've got your following um however i think you should be very um very kind of guarded these days with what you put onto social media Mm. um because some things can be taken out of context um and other things like like we said about i mean you probably won't find a picture of my car on there no purely because that weird guy from that gig I, d- I think I told you about this. Um, or well, he messaged you. He actually, messaged yeah. me with a picture of the car park. He came from London all the way down to where I was gigging, which is like over an hour away, and literally just took a picture of the car park and was like, is this your car? 
It's like, no, but that's the car park that I'm literally gigging at right now. Like, what are you doing? That's I was really, like, really are you weird. here? And he was like, I'm not now. It's just like, oh, it was so creepy. That's bizarre, isn't so it? So for me, like, I, I won't share personal things on there, really. Mm. I won't put, like, a picture of my house or my car or anything sort of proper personal about me, but I'll occasionally share a picture of, you know, my family or fiancé or my yeah. pug. Yeah. My little fatty. Aww. But other than that, nothing really too personal. Aww. I keep it light-hearted. Little gas. Little gas. Sorry, I was thinking about the pug. <laughs> the pug in um, a sheep costume. Him. Yeah, so I think, I think yes, definitely have social media, but make sure that you're aware of what you're putting on it. Mm. Make sure that like, I put stuff on social media that I wouldn't mind my nan and granddad. Yeah, reading true. as well. True. So I mean, yeah, that's a good go. chat. And it's good to have social media because if when gigging does return, if if it returns, <laughs> I'm hope it, oh it, it will return. It will return. <laughs> In the 2022. No, <laughs> it'll be back. But no one's going to hear about your gigs if you don't post it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I'm a little bit bad at that, but um, <laughs> I've got better. You have. You're, you're smashing it. I have got it. better, yeah. You've been doing the Instagram for our podcast today, haven't you? Yes. Smashing so it. So go and check out the uh, Instagram because there's a few little funny ones on there now. Hell yeah. Hell yes. Um, so let's talk about... Now, Connor and I, being photographers... And mm -hmm. videographers, we are so excited about the new Canon R5 coming it's, out. It's been a long time coming. And <sighs> I'm still very sceptical because I know what Canon's like. They're going to hold something back. They're going to do something. They usually hold like. something back. But they announced, well, Canon Rumours posted, well, Rumours. <laughs> <laughs> and they basically <laughs> shared some news about an another Canon camera, which is sort of like the me to you, the little brother of the R5. You're the R5 and I'm the R6. It's the slightly <laughs> less impressive one. Oh, shut so up. <laughs> they, they posted rumours about the R, R6, which is sort of the less well-built, less specced out version of the R5. And it has been a, a long time coming because the R6 does uncropped 4K at 60 frames a second. So you can slow that down. Yeah. 1080, 120 frames a second, so super slowed down. Um, and it does unprocessed 5K as well. So you can do 5K. So basically, guys, for those of you who don't like follow cameras and all that kind of stuff, it just makes the quality a hell of a lot better. Definitely. And I shared you a link the other day. We've, we've, we've been saying about it for a couple of weeks now, but there's been rumours of an official announcement. The camera's been leaking, well, not leaking, putting out sort of um specs about what the camera can do um no nothing about prices but i i think i mentioned in the last episode that there was rumored to be an official announcement i presume a release date and a price around july the 9th and it turned out to be true Ooh. so i shared you a link of what is going to be a live stream basically they've it's called reimagine and it's their quote biggest product launch ever this is exciting. And someone we really love is going to be involved in oh that live stream. God, Go I'm on, so buddy. Excited. Go on. You want to say it. Okay. The guest speaker. Are we ready for this? I've got uh, my fingers on the button. I know. I know it is. I know it is. Okay. The guest speaker is going to be Peter McKinnon. <laughs> Oh Hell my yes. god, so for those of you who know us on this channel, who are regulars, you know how much we talk about Peter McKinnon. We do. He is God. He is God, and um, he's going to be involved in the Canon Reimagine live stream. Yeah, he is, and uh, it's going to be exciting. I said to you the other day, I was like, imagine if he came out on this, I don't know what, if it's going to be like a pre-recorded live stream, or if it's an actual sort of live stream event with like no one there, and they're just broadcasting it across the internet. But imagine if he were like walked out on stage and was like, Oh yeah, here's the R5. Oh <laughs> like, my here it god, is, guys. I'd literally, I'd literally cry. Or just walked on stage and was like, "What's up, everybody? What's this is the R5." <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> that would be sick. You got to do it. He, he made a video was talking about. It. He was like, "You got to go like a what's up." No, it was like a that kind of thing. It was like a what's up. That's it. Yeah. There you go. But he said it's. He it was like, "It's all in the arms. It's all in the arms." <laughs> See, I've still got to be a little bit You've gentle because be I've taken my, my little cast thing off. But it's looking better. It is looking a lot better, but um, my thumb is still a little bit sore. Mm. 
But with the July 9th live stream, we're going to be watching it together, aren't we? Yes, we are. It's exciting. And if I find out, I'm going to be stalking Peter's Instagram. And if I find out that he's going to be in the UK or England. I don't know. I hope so. Because oh, my I, God. I will literally just, I will go there. That would be cool. I know well, when we were in London, before you got to VidCon, um, you you came, no, was it Ben? Was it Ben Keep who went going. to VidCon? Yeah, Ben, ben went to um, some event in London. And he was basically saying that one, another follower that we really like, a guy called Chris Howe, was um, in London at some point. And he posted stuff on Instagram that he may or may not be in London. So Ben and I were like constantly refreshing his uh, Instagram feed. Like, oh my God, he's, he's going to be in London. That is sick. So the Canon website basically says that Peter McKinnon, is going to be involved and the live stream is being broadcast in Europe and America only, in English only. I just hope that he's in the UK. That would be pretty <laughs> cool. I'm not going to lie, I'm just hoping that, that he's going to be, be there. Cool. I'll literally just be like, Peter, can you uh, can you sign my uh, my arm so I can get it tattooed? Sign your arm, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Literally, if, if he literally signed like here mm. and was like PM, I, would le- I probably would get that tattooed, you know? Definitely. Absolutely. I've seen that I've seen that happen where it's like Ed Sheeran or someone yeah. has written on someone's arm and then they've gone to a or boob. Shop. I've seen it on their boob actually and, and they they've they've like signed their boob. their boob and then they've tattooed it on. Ow. Yeah. Apparently the worst place to get a tattoo is here because there's less skin and fat and muscle. I so heard it was under your foot. Oh. Oh ouch. Eat both. Yeah. Both. That would be scary. But <laughs> July 9th. Rumour, two Canon cameras. Jesus. So, two new cameras, Peter McKinnon, rumoured to be six new lenses. Mm. Oh. They won't fit our cameras because the EOS R series use this new mount called RF mount lenses, which are like... Are there not adapters for that? Don't know. Don't think so. They're really big and they're really sort of proper pro lenses. Okay, so we're not going to be able to afford them anyway. <laughs> Maybe. You never know. If if we get another sponsor on the podcast, you never know. Oh, yeah. Feel free to sponsor us. Feel free to sponsor us. <laughs> that would be cool to have another sponsor. But nine, no, six new Canon RF mount lenses, mm-hmm. two new cameras. I'm intrigued to see if they'll put anything else out. I mean, I'm so excited about the R5. I couldn't care less about anything else, if I'm completely honest. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> no, I joke. I joke. I, 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 I'm very... I'm still sceptical that they're going to hold something back. Like with the M50, yeah. it's so great for vlogging. It's so lightweight. And when they announced, they said, "Oh yeah, it's gonna, it's the first Canon mirrorless camera with 4K." I was like, "Oh yes, I need to get this." No dual pixel sort of focus and a massive crop. I was like, oh, really? "Do you want to? Why? Do you want to explain that to to the normals?" Yes, <laughs> the normals. The, for layman's terms, basically, it dual pic, Canon's dual pixel sort of focus is incredible. It wherever you move, it tracks your face or hand or, or object, and you're guaranteed to be in focus. Yeah. Canon annoyingly, they have 4K and it crops in. So if you think of like 1080, it's sort of like that. Whereas the 4K zooms in and gets re- like a lot tighter, a lot less bigger field of view. So instead of it being like an A3 sheet of paper, it turns into an A4 sheet mm, of paper. And that sucks. Yes. But they, and, they, and they said they purposely turned that off and the dual pixel autofocus to protect their higher range of cameras. Yeah. I keep praying that one day they will enable the dual pixel autofocus like in a software update just because there's been so many other new cameras that are coming out that they don't really feel like they need to protect them yeah. like that. So, but we're, hoping, so we're hoping that the R5 doesn't have like restricted things on it. Th- the thing I'm hoping for is no record limit. That would be good. Because I think I said in the last episode, Sony... One good thing about them is they don't have a record limit. Oh, that's cameras. painful to it's, hear. It sucks that. to hear. I, 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 I need to punish myself for saying that later. But honestly, it's it's the one good thing I really like about Sony cameras: no record limit. Okay, I'm going to stop you talking about Sony for now. Thank you. Let's go on to. It was making my ears hurt. Anyway. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. You can thank me later. Uh, we are going to talk about track of the week. We still don't have a theme tune for it, but no. maybe we'll just do this.
That was a good fade. I'm pleased with that. I'm actually really impressed with that fade. Thank you. I should be a DJ. <laughs> no. Next David, <laughs> next David get up. <laughs> yeah, please don't ever do that again. I'm never doing that um. again. <laughs> I am not a DJ. Hashtag press spacebar. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, track of the week. The Roxy, what is your track of the week? My track of the week, Mr. Connor Wells, is Killer and the Sound. Tune. By Noah Gun. Is that the one by Noah Gunderson? It is the one by Noah Gunderson. I like it, because um, I, I didn't know if there was a different version. I couldn't remember. The title sounds familiar, but if it's the one by Noah Gunson, then that's a tune. Yeah, Killer in the Sound. Um, it's it's an insane song. It's very chilled. It's a little bit dark, and I think that's kind of reflected my mood this week. That's fair. So that's probably that's probably my track of the week. So Noah Gunderson, Killer and the Sound. We'll put a link to that in the description. Yo. Yo. How my about tr- you, Mr. Connor Wells? My track of the week I, I don't think any of my tracks of the weeks have been sort of new current songs, but I've been listening to Keen again. Oh, I, I love, love Keen. Keen. We were uh, meant to see him we two were, weeks ago. We were going to see Keen two weeks ago. So I've been listening to one of my favourite sort of upbeat Keen songs. There's not many sort of upbeat Keen songs, you know, like a really yep. nice, good, happy one. Sovereign Light Cafe. I just I love, love that song. I love it. And I was telling you the other day, was it this morning, that Keen don't have a guitarist? Yeah. It still baffles me. I was watching videos of them live. I was like, Where's drums, the guitarist? Bass, piano, Vocals. Tom Chaplin. Where's the guitarist? <laughs> like, I don't know any of the other members' names, so <laughs> apologies to the other members of Keen. I mean, it's like Coldplay, isn't it, really? It is like Coldplay. It's, it's a thing, like, it's lead singer syndrome. I've spoken to you about mm-hmm. this. There's so many bands that are just known because of the lead singer. Yeah. I can't name any of the other members of Foo Fighters other than Dave Grohl. What about Paramore other than Hayley Williams? Don't know them. No. See? Don't know them. See? Lead singer syndrome. Yeah. But I've been listening to Sovereign Light Cafe and it's so good. I, honestly, it's one of my feel-good songs. It is a proper good feel-good song. It is. And it's just a... I can't sing all of it because of copyright reasons, but True. like the beat is like... It's a proper sort of foot stomp one, isn't it? Yeah, it's like one that you, you literally just feel good to. I do. And and we need that now. We yeah, we that. do. We mm. need a little bit of uplifting. We do. So other than track of the week, <laughs> what is your favourite music video that you've seen? Sort of on the same lines of Keen. When Tom Chaplin went solo. 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 He put an, an I can't remember what's the album called. It's a bit like Jason Derulo. Solo. Love it. And um, yeah, he put out a an album and it was a song called Quicksand and I love the music video for it. It was insane. It's so good. It was like he, this, he was trying to get into this circle, uh, but yet the wind kept, bl- or he was trying to get out of a circle, but the wind kept blowing him back in. Yep. Or out. I, I just loved it. Yeah. It was a really good, really loved good music it. video. What about yours? What is Roxy Searle's track of no, not track of the week. What is your favourite music video? <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember talking about this last week. Um, Rayleigh Ritchie, Stronger mm. Than Ever. Purely yeah. because, again, this week, it's been a real tough week. And I really thought that um, this video helped me. So you, you have come out this week stronger than ever, mate. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And we'll just keep getting stronger, bro. Hell yeah. Boom. We have anti-backed, by the we way. We do. You <laughs> sprayed me with anti-back, <laughs> may I add. You so drenched outside, me outside in the back. studio, they've got this massive tub that's got like a little handle like on the from, top of it. It's from Costco. It must be. It it's must huge. be. It's literally so big, and I, I literally put a little bit on my hand, and I was like, "God, that came out really like fast and quick." And I was like, "Oh Jesus!" And I was like, "You can't kind of put your hands here. I'll give you some anti back." And honestly, it was the funniest thing ever. Literally, I just went Foom! like shot the handle straight down, and it just went all over him. It was brilliant. For you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. It's like I was getting ready to wash my face in the sink. It was literally like, ah. yeah, Yeah. But my hands are clean now. So and your arms and, and your and face arms, and everything. Yeah. Like all the clothing, everything's now clean. We're not wasting it. We like ain't. We're just making sure that we are safe. Yeah. It's like a shower. <laughs> it's great. <crazy. laughs> Love it. Okay. So I think that is us. I think we are probably going to have to call it a call day. that time wrap it up so thank you all so much for listening thank you so much for watching 
Thank um, you for subscribing or liking if you have or haven't already. Feel if, free to give this a share. Yeah, share it with your friends, your family, your milkman. Your dog. Your dog. Just everyone. Give yeah. it a share. Thank you. Um, let us know. I think next week we're going to be having our mumsies on. We've got an idea. We've got an idea. We've got an idea. So to hopefully, get our mums on the fingers podcast. Crossed, we can get this and make Never this know. happen for the tenth anniversary. Tenth anniversary. Ten weeks of the Young Broke Musician podcast. Ah! That is exciting. Yeah, it is. So, you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on YouTube. YouTube. You can and. I think there's only one thing left to say. Yeah. See See ya. ya.